I'm not ready yet, no! <laughs> My full name is Aichureka Sanaliva. Beautiful moon, that's what my dad called me. But everybody calls me Aika because it's so typical when people come to a foreign country and people cannot pronounce their names. I remember leaving for London and I said to Papa, my dad, I said, I'm going to London and the other. Whatever your choices are, you need to stand on your two feet. So I come from Kyrgyzstan, so one of the smallest stands in post-Soviet countries. I came here in my 20s. It was the first time on a plane, on my own, independently. I didn't know anybody in this country. When I came here, I already had my degree. I had an engineering degree. So I just thought like, oh, do I want to get myself into debt? Maybe I just do something else. So I enrolled myself to some courses, tailoring courses, art courses, things I'm like, I'll do something I'll enjoy doing. Nobody, you know, I am, I decide what I want to do. All of a sudden, I didn't have that family pressure. <laughs> and sewing, I always had the sewing machine, so I knew how to sew. But coming here and then actually doing it like properly, it was kind of eye-opening. Eye like, oh, there is a tailoring you can do, you know, like it was kind of more professional way. And at the same time was doing a waitressing job on the side. And that's where I met my very good friend of mine. Um, and she said, if you want fabric for your course, uh, my mom has loads of fabric in her attic, so you can come and get some. So I turned up one day to her house and she's, she opens her living room and it's just full of fabric. I'm just like, wow, this is amazing. And, and then I, I think she saw my enthusiasm and she said, oh, if you need help, you can come and I'll help you. Uh, so her mom taught me loads of, you know, things which I couldn't do because I was just learning how to do tailoring course. So she gave me the fabric and then she said, oh, if you want, I can also, we can do a couple of things on the side, nothing to do with your course. So that's me, eight o'clock in the morning, knocking on the door. <laughs> I'm here to do that thing you told me, you know, so let's do it. That was, and she said, okay. I took it seriously, you know, I, if I want to do it, you've got to take it seriously. I was excited and I think that's what it is when, when you're excited and then you have the desire, then it happens. Here we go, we start making things. I said, oh, I want to make this blouse and I want to make this and that. So I made myself a blouse and people start stopping me on the street. It's like, oh, that's amazing. That looks really nice. And it was from African fabric. So that was happening and at the same time a um, friend of mine was getting married in Ghana and he said to me, you must come to my wedding. So by that time I had a boyfriend who I met in the same restaurant and that was our first holiday, Ghana. So we went there. Well, and I bought some fabric, brought it back, and start making more things with Penny. So my business partner is Penny, mom um, of my best mate. So when I came back, she goes, she was so excited that we were going to Ghana, and she said, "Did you like it?" I said, "Oh, I loved it." And we, we had both that bug for for the country, for the fabric. I wish I knew how it would feel. To be free. It's phenomenal the way I feel in Ghana. It's just so lovely. The minute you land, it's the atmosphere, it's the feel, it's the people, it's the energy of people. So I am there with the baby, my son is crying, I'm sweating, 40 degrees, hot, stressed, lots of fabric. It's like, and they say, hey, come, come in, turn the fan on. Pineapple, pineapple, bring pineapple, water, do you have water? It's like they want to help you. And not because you're buying fabric, just because they see you are struggling. People. 
us apart. When I go there, my kids wear the clothing we make, they go and they say, wow, you know, they see what we made with the fabric. They are so impressed. They're so proud. They celebrated with us, you know. I look at it, I am celebrating culture. I wish I could give all I'm longing to give. And I consider myself to be a, um, a lucky person to meet people who I've met and be where I am. Because if I never met my friend and I never met her mother, I am where I am because of the people around me. ourselves to go and have a look at the trade show in Paris so Penny got sick so I went myself went uh, to Paris got to this exhibition and I start looking and the vibe I just didn't like it and I just started questioning that do I want this and I said no I don't have a big ego of how like oh my brand you know it's in every shop I don't there is nothing wrong with it to want your brand to be everywhere and be very successful my priorities are family so if I take that step I don't think I can do both you have to sacrifice and I'm not willing to sacrifice my, my family and my children and my time I'm happy where I am I am content Yeah, don't give me money, give me things to see, give me things to do, give me things to hear. I think it's about experiences, it's not about what we have and, you know, physically. What's gonna happen next? I think uncertainty in good times is not the good thing, but during COVID it made it even worse. So, and we start making masks and there's all those off cuts. And so it's exactly what we promote. It's like, we don't like waste. We donate all our off cuts to schools and to other projects, making something which is sustainable, they're washable. Look at the, all those disposable masks all over the place, it's terrifying. And then COVID happens and what happens? We're just wrapping everything in plastic and it's gone worse. It's choosing which is less harmful, I suppose, you know. It's like I am bringing a next generation. So I need to make sure that I have the responsibility to teach them a better way of doing things, different way. Be more self-sufficient, wanting less and be more resourceful. It's not amount of stuff they need to have, that's not important. It's like, take care of what you've got and value it. And then if you buy, buy it well, buy it less. So slowly, slowly, step by step, I think we're gonna get back and I'm going to Broadway market in a couple of weeks. So hopefully it's not gonna get worse. Okay. So I wake up at six, load the car by seven, then go back, have quick shower, have my breakfast out the house by eight, get to the market by nine, nine till four, working straight, talking, 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 selling, selling if it if it's a good day. You can't afford to stand still. It's it's always something's happening. So replying to emails, we will have technology where you can do you can be busy all the time <laughs> so sometimes it's just nice not to do anything and just sit and and I always say to myself oh just bring a newspaper maybe it'll be quiet and I'll read the newspaper do I ever read the newspaper no sleeping lizards like lizards moving so fast and sudden I work for both of us for Penny and I so we kept sleeping lizard as a name mm -hmm. 